Again, Pietro here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we are going back in time, not that far. We're going to take a look at this device, the Remarkable Tablet. The Remarkable 2, actually, RM2 or Remarkable Tablet. It's an electronic ink device. Technology moves fast and then faster every year I'm alive. I still remember watching black and white TV back in college. Uh, Scotty, if you're watching, remember that green and black TV that we had? Okay, that was 1991, but still, it wasn't a color TV. And then growing up, yeah, I had color TVs. But I remember seeing black and white TVs in people's houses. I imagine in my lifetime that tablets will continue to evolve, and my hope is that electronic ink also does the same. It was 120 days ago that this remarkable 2 e-ink device dropped in my testing realm, if you will. Yes, I am a QA software engineer and I enjoy breaking code, finding the bugs that are... How do you... 20... Anyway... <laughs> 22, <laughs> 22 clicks deep and logging showstopper bugs. Not that often, I wish it was more. And that being said, let us begin this review with what is wrong with this tablet. I'd like to start off, you know, give you the bad news first. So what's wrong with it? One, there's no backlight. Two, there's no integration with Evernote. Three, there's no integration with Google Notes or Microsoft Notes or any notes of that kind. Uh, four, there is no backup option. You, you're forced to use the Remarkable Cloud for all your data. And maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. Now, if, if you never connect it to Wi-Fi, well, you won't get the updates, but you could choose to do that and then you could push content and grab content off via USB. I have heard that some people do that. Number five, there's no backlight. And then number six, you know, it, it could use a little more RAM, but that's just my opinion. I've used other electronic ink devices and they kind of have the same type of lag. But when you look at how thin it is, that the tablet it is actually thinner than a normal pencil. Wait, I have one right here. So here's your normal, Whoop. Here's your normal Dixon number two pencil, right? Oh, look. Oh, it's turned rubbery. Uh, the tablet is not as thick as a regular pencil, and that's just a huge perk. Number seven, what else is wrong? Once in a while, there is some ghosting. And number eight, no, there is no integration with ebook libraries such as Kindle ebooks. And number nine, yes, it has its issues. It did lock up on me twice, but that's in 120 days. What is that, four months? That's really good, right? I think so. There's a new update. Let's take a look at it. Here we go, ready? Oh, I had the wrong pencil. Hang on, let's go the other way. I really like it. <laughs> I, I like it a lot actually and I'll get to my likes and dislikes in just a few minutes. I, I think you'll enjoy them. So now we're back to the overhead camera and you can see right here at the very bottom we have an update available. Update installed. Tap to restart. Well if you know anything about devices it's really good to plug them in when you're doing an install. So let's do that. If I can find my power plug. I like to use the Apple 5 watt or this one. This is a Beats Audio 5 watt charger. So now it's charging and then right in the bottom right we do tap 
to restart. So now the Remarkable is restarting. You know, it's really hard to keep things in frame when you're doing the presenting and you're manning two cameras. <laughs> uh, one of these days I'll have to hire a high school student to help me. So now the Remarkable is restarting, loading. Someone asked me several months ago, how often does the Remarkable update? And the answer is, I don't know, but in the last 120 days, it's been updating not quite every month. Here we go. Pinch to zoom. Wasn't that one of the things I asked about? Thank you, Remarkable. Thumbs up. Okay, in software update 2.6, we've introduced new gestures, pinch and zoom, a two finger pan to move around the page once you've zoomed in. Awesome. So let's zoom in so we can read all that. Cool, cut and paste. We've also improved the look and feel of PDFs and eBooks. Navigation links within PDFs are now supported. That's good news. Uh, landscape files will appear in the correct orientation on your home screen with the toolbar and on the correct slot side. And eBooks gain a range of visual upgrades. Nice. See full release notes. So we have pinch to zoom, improved PDF navigation. That's good stuff. So this is update 2.6, new gestures. Okay, so I guess that's about it. And I have a testing Libro here, so I should just be able to pinch. Oh, okay, pinch to zoom. Where have you been all my life? That's an awesome feature. Yes, so now we're, so you can only zoom out to the real view. You can't like zoom out to bird's eye view, but you can quickly zoom in and that works quite well. So let's go to PDFs and let's try a cool PDF. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh yeah, here we go. Here's a Garmin manual. Nothing like a Garmin manual, right? So we can zoom in with just a pinch. That was really quick. So let's try the navigation. So here's the PDF. So we can click right there and we can do adjust view. And now the view is going to be just like I assigned it. And then we have search. So let me search for the word battery. Awesome. Okay, I actually didn't know I could do that. So the PDF is completely indexed. Nice. I don't know if that's new or not, but it's new to me. So there you go, update uh, 2.6 with Remarkable Tablet. So now what I'll do is I'm going to talk to you about my likes of, the of this device. So number one, the paper-like feel. And to that, let me, just, let me just show you. So I'm gonna go back to notebooks. And then I'm gonna to go to the, my testing notebook that I created earlier today. And I found a new hidden feature. And I'm just gonna start off and I might get like, oh, I'll get to that later. No, no, I'm just gonna tell you right now. So let's go to a new page. So watch this. I'm in marker right now. And when you're in marker, you have multiple choices. You have thin, you have medium, thick, black, gray, white. So I'm gonna do gray font. It's kind of a gray font and kind of a silver. So there's your gray font right there. And watch this. So we're gonna write the word silver and underline it. And now we're gonna to switch to highlighter and watch what happens. the font turns black. That's pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty cool. Now, if I go to just regular black, you can see the difference. So, whoops. Good thing there's an eraser, huh? So now we'll switch to marker, go to black ink. So there's black. 
Now we'll switch to highlighter again. See the difference? It really does make it look not as black, but still pretty cool. So there you go. I love the feel. I love that sound. And, and I know I've talked about this before, but you know, it's been four months now and the sound of pencil really does sound like you write it on paper. I have a scratch piece of paper. So here's the sound of pencil. And now we'll do similar, right? Very similar, I thought. So there you go. The sounds, the writing experience, it's all good. And yes, no, it, it doesn't feel exactly like paper, but it does. I really like it. Number three, the ability to learn while I take notes. So for me, uh, it's it's a tactile experience when I'm when I'm using the Remarkable. And when I type something on a keyboard, I'm not getting that same experience. However, when I'm taking notes, visually, I I remember what I've written down. And that's cognitively going into my brain, you know, from the short term, is it over the hypocalamus? Anyway, when I'm writing and taking notes with a pen or an electronic ink stylus like this one, this one right there, I'm able to remember what I've written down more effectively. Maybe that's not you. Maybe, maybe you can use a keyboard like this one. And when you're using a keyboard, it just works great for you, but I don't get that same experience. Number four, there's no glare when reading. So I'm, I don't have any overhead lights on here. So I'm going to switch to one of my eBooks, one that I'm reading right now, 007 Diamonds Are Forever by James Bond. Sorry, <laughs> Diamonds Are Forever by Ian Fleming. Uh, I just actually started. So I literally just started reading chapter one today. So when I'm reading this, there's, I mean, if you can look right there on the screen, there's hardly any glare. Even if I turn on an overhead light, which I normally don't like to do, let's see if this can trace us. Whoop, hang on. Still not a lot of glare. Pretty cool, right? I think so. You know, I'm gonna turn that off because I, I really don't like overhead lights. So when you're looking at this, now I did say that one of my negatives is that I don't like that it doesn't have a backlight or a side light or some type of indiglo, but at the same time, I would like something. The cool thing is when you're, well, I'm using both my phones, but when you're viewing a laptop screen such as this, there is blue light emitting from that screen. And when you're staring that, well, you stare at that blue light all day and hopefully you have blue, blue blockers, uh, like the glasses that I'm wearing right now, and maybe that will help you. Number six, no distractions. When I'm reading, I'm just reading. There's no pop-ups, there's no alarms, there's no vibrations. I just get to read or write or take notes. I love it. Number seven, no sounds or beeps that cause distractions to others when I'm in a meeting. You know, <laughs> For years, I'm like, okay, I'm walking to a meeting. Oh, did I, did I, did I hit the anti-vibration click on my phone? Okay, this is just a case. It's a prop. Hello. Uh, you always have to remember that. When I take the remarkable into a meeting, I don't have to do that because it doesn't make any noise. And sure, some people are like, well, I want to listen to music. Well, that's what your phone is for, or your smartwatch. So I really like that, especially when I'm traveling. We took a trip to Las Vegas recently and I was able to hand this to my daughter without any reservation that she was gonna watch something scary or that uh, she was gonna find content that might be disturbing. Well, when you hand your child a smartphone or a tablet that's connected to the internet, unless you're really good at locking it down, for me, that, that's always in the back of my mind that, well, what are they gonna find on purpose or an accident? Anyway, 
Next, we have, it just works. You know, when I, when I open, here we'll do a live demo. So there I closed it. When I open things and close things, they open and they close and it just works. When I click on buttons, it works. I was doing a copying and pasting and I lost one letter. You know, I did the little lasso, here I'll show you. So when you're doing a copying and pasting, so here's the text, text 101, and then you do this, zoop. So now I've copied it, and then you cut it. See how it did the entire thing? And now I go to a new page, tap, and then it pastes. You can both expand that, you can rotate it. I mean, yeah, and then I can copy that and paste it again, and paste it again, and paste it again, and paste it again. The copy and paste tool is really cool, something you can't do with paper. One of my favorite features, to be honest. I'll just leave that pencil there as part of the reminder that it is a paper-like experience. And number nine, battery life. It still lasts me pretty much a full week. I normally charge it once a week. I haven't charged it for several days. Let's check the battery life. I just barely plugged it in and it's at 46%. So it dropped 54% over the past five days and I use it every day for an hour or two. Constantly taking notes about work, life, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, number 10, plenty of space for all my books. Uh, if I go to menu and then I go to eBooks, you can see right here, I have a lot of books and they're not all, you know, five pages, 10 pages. Some of them are thousands of pages like the Bible and a couple of the books that I've downloaded are hundreds of pages. You download a hundred page PDF and it's really only 20 kilobytes or 50 kilobytes or a meg or two. When you're dealing with gigabytes of storage, you have more than enough space because, well, just do the math. I'll, if you need me to do more math and, and fully explain how that works, let me know and I'll calculate it out and explain to you how you can literally put hundreds and hundreds of eBooks and PDFs. Number 11, the RM2 easily backs itself up. Let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna go in my testing notebook, go to a new page, type new page, update me, and then as soon as I close it, you'll see a line right there along the top, a little check mark, and boom, it's updated. You know, it seems to be updating faster since that update. So that's a nice feature. Number 12. Quick access to all my notes, eBooks, PDFs via laptop through the mobile app on my phone. So on my laptop, I have access to all the remarkable data. On my cell phone here, I can access all my data. I can access notes, eBooks. If I wanna read something that's on my remarkable and I just don't happen to have it or someone's borrowing it, I can still do that. That's a huge advantage. Number 13, it's easy to share notes. In the bottom left-hand corner, you click on the share button, send by email, and then right there, you just type a message, and then send. It's, it's that quick. And yes, it does require an internet connection. Number 14, the different styles of writing. The stylus is so unique with the writing and the drawing experience, I just really, really like it. Uh, and again, I'll just quickly show you. There's the ballpoint pen, there's the fine liner, there's the marker, pencil, mechanical pencil, paintbrush, highlighter, and the calligraphy pen. And the calligraphy pen. My favorite that I normally use is ballpoint. I use the marker for demos because it's a large font, but mainly just pencil, mechanical pencil, and ballpoint. Uh, my kids love the paintbrush, and they also like the... Uh, calligraphy pen because you know it's the fancy font number 15 the fun factor when telling others yeah it, it makes me feel like remarkable should be sending me a contract uh, for profit sharing or something uh, I, I feel like 
not that I become a fanboy, but maybe a little bit. I, whenever someone asks me about this device, I'm more than willing to let them use it and experience it. But no, I, I'm not affiliated with Remarkable. Paramount Kid, if you're watching, this is a non-sponsored video. All right, next, we have number 16, easy to use for kids. And 17, well, it's just overall easy to learn. Uh, the UI is quite simplistic when you're navigating from pages to pages on this device. You know, oh, you want to click a new book. Click a, it's real easy. You just click on new notebook. Uh, you can organize the notebook into folders like I've done. So I have my files. I have one called Lavoro, that's Italian for work. I have one called Wearables 2020, which is a bunch of stuff from last year. Then you can navigate back. You can do like book notes. These are all the like book notes that I'm going to eventually import just in case I want to access them. I have a folder called Dad. Uh, there's my notes on the Ring doorbell that I'm uh, researching. Anyway, it's just it's just easy to use. Yeah. So 120 days later, and that's what I've learned about this device. Uh, what are your thoughts? What do you think about this tablet, this electronic device? Let me move that camera out of the way. Is, is this something that you would spend $400 on? I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty thin, right? According to Remarkable, this is the world's thinnest tablet. And you know what? I think this is the perfect time to show you, a, not a gift that they sent me, but I was having problems with the stylus and once in a while, it kind of pulls the ink off the page. Uh, let me see if I can demo that, hold on. You know, I don't think it's gonna work. Because lately it's been working, but sometimes I'll have to like take the tip out, this little stylus tip, and then put it back in again. And I will show you a life hack. I, I can't remember her name, but she commented on my videos. And if your stylus is acting kind of funky and it's getting a bad edge, you just take out an emery board and you just file it down to round out the tip and that can save you a dollar forty three. Okay, and now a customer experience honest review about Remarkable. I was having problems with my stylus which I annotated in a video several months ago and I contacted him in January within nine business, well, yeah, within seven business days, I received a package. Let's take a look. <gasps> it's a, uh, well, it's, there's one thing in here. The Marker Plus for Remarkable 2. Well, thank you, Remarkable Support, for sending me just a brand new stylus. I thought they were going to send me, well, I don't know what they're gonna send me. Remarkable. Yay! So let's see how the new stylus is. Oh, awesome! Well, not only have I saved, well, not only have I learned how to save a dollar forty-three on using a nail file on that life hack that one of my followers suggested, uh, they sent me a whole bunch of new tips. So here are the new tips, awesome. I don't know how I'm gonna keep these two apart. So there's the old stylus. Now let's try the new stylus. You know, it feels different. Just a little bit. 
And I don't know why, the new one feels lighter. I, I can't explain it. For, for some reason, yeah, the new one does feel lighter. But they look the same. Less scratches, that's for sure. Well, cool. So what do you know? You contact Remarkable, Remarkable Support and tell them your stylus is broken. And it was, it, it was acting up the other day where when I was writing, this is about last week, when I was writing, it was not pulling the ink. Well, sorry, it was pulling the ink. It, it felt as if it was a more electronic experience. And yes, that was free of charge. They didn't charge me shipping or anything. The support team just sent it to me. Well, we'll close using the uh, Osmo device, if that works out for you. I don't work for Remarkable. I, I work for a different company, and uh, I've been using it for the last four months. I really like the device. Previous to using this electronic tablet, I've never used uh, anything other than an iPad, really. So it's been a unique experience to have all of my notes with me. And that's one thing that I really like. I like being able to have work, church, my personal thoughts, drawings of my kids, all combined on one device. And again, that cognitive learning experience has been wonderful and it's just fun to use. I, I like gadgets. Gadgets Anonymous, that's why it's named such. If you have any pithy comments, um, if you want to know more about the device, let me know. Oh, actually, I have one more thing to show you. Someone commented earlier today and they wanted me to show them how to move notes from one notebook into another. So let me quickly show you that. And you open up a notebook. So let's say this page right here doesn't belong in this notebook. For step number one, bottom left hand corner, click in the page overview. And then right here at the top where it says move, so you wanna select the pages, whoops. So page overview. So if you do a long press, you can select page six, or I can do a long press and so see how I'm doing that? So now I've selected these four pages and then you click move and it lets me choose if I wanna move them in this notebook, but in the top right, if you see right there, it says move out. So as soon as you click on move out, now I get to choose. So then that top right, I can do a new notebook or I can choose an existing notebook. So I'm gonna just move them to the ring doorbell for now and then right there, I can hit cancel and do nothing, or I can just hit move, and then those pages were quickly moved from one notebook to another. So you can move pages within the notebook, and then you can also move pages around in the notebook, or if you decide, oh wait, I don't want those notes in that notebook, I want them in a new notebook, you can do that as well. I, I hope you enjoyed that review and no, it didn't take me 120 days to write it. I, I've been writing up the likes for quite some time and compiling my list of dislikes. If you agree or disagree, well, <sighs> San Pellegrino, if you want to sponsor me, sure. Pithy comments down below. The social media realm, that's one of the things I like. You're entitled to your opinion. If you hate this video, let me know. If you love the video, let me know, give it a thumbs up, and sure, I would love it if you subscribed. And that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I know there's a lot of tech reviewers out there, so I appreciate your time, and I will have another gadget review sometime in the next 88 days. Until then, remember that numbers mean something, and numbers mean nothing at all and let the credits roll for the Paramount Cat. Goodbye.